Hello and welcome to yet another exciting episode of the talk show. I'm your host Suri Smith coming to you from the Motorrad showroom at Santon Auto. We have an extremely exciting lineup for this week, so grab a cup of coffee and get comfy because it's time to put pedal to the metal. Coming up on the show, we test out the new Alfa Romeo Giulia and meet its rivals. We we'll also show you how to start up a cold engine correctly and we show you the hot off the press new Mini All 4 and give you some options. Finishing off with motoring news. Since its foundation, Alfa Romeo has taken a unique and original approach to creating cars, striving for a point of convergence between style and passion, blending iconic Italian design, cutting-edge technology and a bold dynamic spirit to continually inspire authentic emotions. And Alfa Romeo has done it once again with the new Giulia. Take a look at this stunner. Dear Predictable, there's no other way to say this, it's over. I found a permanent escape from monotony. Someone who desires more than just beauty alone, who prefers elusive over usual, powerful over passive. Together we are perfectly balanced. Our senses awake, our hearts racing as one. I know this is sudden, but you know what they say. If you love something, set it free. See you around, Julia. What we have here is the Alpha Julia, which was launched at the start of March this year. Both the Julia and the Julia QV will now be available in the D segment. And what we'll be testing today is the base model. I'm quite eager to show you guys exactly what she's about. Front, a new double wishbone suspension with semi-virtual steering axis was developed to optimize the filtering effect and guarantee rapid, accurate steering. The Alfa Romeo exclusive design keeps the constant caster trail on corners and can tackle high lateral accelerations as a result of the always perfect footprint. In any situation and at all speeds, driving Julia with the most direct steering ratio on the market segment is natural and instinctive. The four suspension arm solution on the rear axe, patented by Alfa Romeo, ensures top performance, driving pleasure and comfort. Julia also features a new Alfa DNA selector, which I have mentioned, which modifies the car's dynamic behavior according to the driver's selection. Dynamic, natural, advanced efficiency. Energy efficiency mode implemented for the first time on an Alfa Romeo and race, which is only on the QV models. The Julia also has an innovative electromechanical braking system, which combines stability control and a traditional servo brake. In addition to providing the all-important weight optimization and reduced pedal vibrations, an instantaneous brake response is guaranteed with a record stopping distance of 100 km per hour to zero in 38.5 meters. The interior definitely matches the sleek and stunning looks of the exterior. In the inside, you've got a nice blend of materials, nice stitching on the seats. Uh, this is the baseline model though, so not too many added extras on this specific model. But what you do get is you've got an automatic transmission with a nice middle console where you can operate just about anything from. I don't know if you guys can hear how high this vehicle is revving but it has a lot of torque and it does accelerate quite fast when you put your foot down. There's three different driving dynamics that you can choose from. D, N, A. So D 
D is your sportier version. N will be your normal comfort sport uh, comfort line, and then A would be your more fuel efficient one. I had it in the sportier derivative, that's why it was revving so high. But you can definitely alter it to to meet your driving needs. A defining characteristic of Julia is the management of weight and materials to obtain a perfect distribution across the axles. This is fundamental to ensure that the typical Alfa Romeo driving satisfaction is reached by tweaking the layout and arranging the heavy elements in the most central position possible. The suspension is as essential for ride optimization as weight distribution. The layout implemented on Julia utilizes an exclusive double wishbone suspension with semi-virtual steering axis at the front and a 4.5 link suspension with a solution for toe adjustment patented by Alfa Romeo for the rear axle. Julia features the very best in terms of driving assistance currently on the market. Multiple sensors are fitted throughout the car to guarantee peace of mind and a safer drive. This is demonstrated by the forward collision warning that detects whether Julia is approaching another vehicle or an obstacle on the same trajectory too quickly and it warns or assists the driver to avoid impact or attenuate the consequences. Wow, what a beauty she is to look at. 16 inch alloy wheels, curves running from front to back, coupe like drop in the roof, and a shark fin antenna. Stunning on the eye. Let me show you the back. The back has more than enough legroom and headroom space. Your back passengers will sit very comfortably, two of them at least. If you're going to have a third passenger, the middle console is very high, so yeah, it's going to have to be a small little child sitting in the middle. Apart from that, you've got good storage compartments. You've got cup holders on either side. You've got a little slot here where you can also store something. And apart from that, seating is quite comfortable, so long distances for your back passengers will also be very enjoyable. It also has Isofix chairs, so if you've got a small startup family, this will also be a great choice. Moving over to boot space, you will find that you've got plenty of boot space. I've fit some of my things in here and there's still plenty of space left. So long distances will definitely be enjoyable. So how much will this Italian stallion set you back? 555,000, not too bad at all. Now we like to keep you the consumer up to date on all your options. So if you are in the market to buy, let's see whether any of the beauties bumping head to head with the Julia catch your fancy. Starting with the star of our show, the Alfa Romeo Giulia 2 litre T, which retails for 555,000 Rand. Sporting a 2 litre turbocharged petrol engine with an 8 speed automatic transmission, which accelerates from 0 to 100 km per hour in 6.6 .6 seconds, consuming on average a low 5.9 litres per 100 km. Consumers will feel safe knowing that the Giulia has 6 standard airbags. Then you could also opt for the Kia Cerato Coupe 1.6T Auto, which retails for less than the Giulia, with a retail price of 403,995. The Cerato houses a 1.6 litre turbocharged petrol engine with a six speed automatic transmission, accelerating from 0 to 100 km per hour in 7.4 seconds, reaching a top speed of 222 km per hour. The Serato consumes on average 7.9 meters per 100 kilometers and also houses six standard airbags. 
Lastly, you could also opt for the Volkswagen Passat 1.4 TSI Luxury R-Line, which retails for 500,100. The Passat sports a turbocharged 1.4-litre petrol engine with a 7-speed transmission, reaching 0 to 100 km per hour in 8.4 seconds, with a top speed of 220 km per hour. Average fuel consumption will be low at 5.2 litres per 100 km, and consumers will be happy knowing that the Passat houses six standard airbags. Starting up your car engine in the cold is difficult for two main reasons. First, oil thickens when it's cold, which increases the friction, making it harder for the starter motor to spin the engine. Also, the cold slows down the chemical reaction in your car battery, giving you a lower power output. Now, I know that we don't have snowy days in South Africa, but we do, however, have some freezing temperatures. Up next, we're going to show you the correct way to start up your car engine when it's cold before tackling the road. why you should not warm up your car when it's cold. Many drivers heat up their engine in cold weather in order to prolong its service life. But you actually should not do this. Leaving the engine running idly uses up the fuel. This can damage it. The engine runs on a mixture of air and vaporized fuel. An engine running idly heats up more slowly than normal. At the same time, the cylinders are filled with the fuel mixture, which removes the oil. The best way to heat up a car is to wait a minute after starting it and slowly drive forward. It's now time for a short break, but do stay tuned for more motoring action after the break.